Greetings, everybody. My name is Tim Anderson from Space Information Laboratories. Today we're going to discuss RAD hard and single event upset immune power systems for Cislin or CubeSat missions. Uh, brief overview of who we are and what we do. Uh, we make power systems and avionics for a variety of uh, rockets, missiles, and spacecraft. And we do it for both government and commercial customers. Uh, we, we're proud to support a variety of military and government programs and really enjoy working with our commercial and academic partners as well. A uh, brief overview of kind of our various uh, types of technology. We have the vehicle-borne uh, autonomous fl flight termination systems, uh, intelligent avionics, intelligent power packs, uh, commercial battery systems, and uh, space-based range systems. Uh, we've got some flight heritage on Delta rockets and, and several other platforms. Uh, but today we're here to talk really about cislunar applications. You know, there's a lot of work for us to do. Uh, in the small sat community in cislunar space, basically from from Leo into the, up until you get back down to the lunar surface. Uh, so, we'll, but as we start to enter into those environments, there's uh, some different things that we need to consider. Not the least of which is the radiation environment and how that affects our battery management systems and other hardware. So, what's interesting, you know, getting a ride out to uh, Geo and beyond can, can be challenging. But what we found is if you're in a Going in a polar orbit, you can get similar radiation characteristics, and so you can test out a lot of your hardware closer to home and run similar profiles. And, and for the small stack community, uh, polar orbits are, are kind of a known quantity and something we have a lot of experience in. So that can be really helpful as you're planning your missions for uh, deep space operations. Going further along, you know, some different approaches could include your mission planning, and, and there are some limitations there, of course. A technology selection, which we'll talk about a little bit, and then some of the various hardening techniques. And then that ultimately leads to building your mission requirements. So as we get out past the radiation belts, what we've really got to consider is galactic, galactic cosmic rays. Um, you know, they're well known for bit flipping and causing digital circuit upset events, uh, the most, uh, many of which have been documented in the use of CMOS circuits. Uh, there's there's a variety of energies to continue, not just consider not just the uh, cosmic ray energy, but also the Compton scattering and some other things uh, that, that come along with uh, high energy events. But the you know, there's some things we can consider. Shielding can certainly help. Uh, there's lots of studies on shielding. Um, most of us have found that the uh, inflection point at two millimeter, millimeters of aluminum uh, for protecting uh, silicon. Uh, based electronics, and you know, in geo, there's more studies that say about six millimeters is where that inflection point is, where you you're not you're starting to trade a lot of weight, excuse me, a lot of mass uh, for shielding capability. Uh, how we approach things, uh, at least in our small sat operations, is we have an open modular scalable and reconfigurable bus called the Chameleon, and basically it's a nine U base and then more 9U units stack onto it. Um, most of our systems, I've already got a significant flight heritage uh, through a variety of government programs and, upper at, and are up at TRL-9 already. And we really initially focus on EMI shielding and protection, and it just, it just so happens that that can carry over to radiation protection as well because the Faraday cage can pursue, provide multiple uh, functions in that regard. Uh, mentioned we build power systems, so we, we build a lot. We specialize in, in high discharge and high charge uh, power systems. We use a lithium polymer based Z fold technologies. Uh, you can see the specifications here. And for those who aren't familiar with the Z fold, uh, really the, it's just an accordion kind of arrangement with the anode and cathode in, in alternating layers and the polymer in between. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility with these systems. Uh, we work directly with the manufacturers. There's not really a, a middleman, so we can have a lot of conversations with them about uh, various configurations for these types of pouch cells. Uh, the key difference uh, and differentiator between 18650s and the, with kind of the jelly roll format and the Z fold is the difference in internal resistance. And that in, uh, difference enables the higher discharge rates and the higher charge rates, uh, along with some minimum heat rise. 
so in considering your approaches, one thing you want to look at is your battery management system. It's important to have radiation tolerant battery management systems. You should monitor everything at each individual cell level and protect against uh, all the various hazards that come with uh, overcharging, undercharging, or, or discharging too deeply. Um, if you have multiple cells, it's important to prevent uh, cascading failures between cells using a phase change material. Uh, we've got one that we like in particular. Um, they, they come in a variety of configurations. And then ultimately, you know, in, in, in making a decision about buying really hard, rad hard components, which can be extremely expensive or creating a permissive environment for uh, more av readily available components uh, by shielding them more and encasing them more. We, we tend to go with that, that latter approach, but you know, there, there's certainly options there and these are some things to consider uh, as you're building your insulation and protection systems. So for battery management systems, this is what we design with. Uh, we've, we've got a lot of redundancy and protection inside of our system and constant monitoring uh, across you know, each individual cell level uh, protects from uh, all the various charge and discharge errors that you can have and then really you know continuous recording the data and, and saving it in the in the case of a failure so you can do some forensics as well uh, we've handled most of the battery battery chemistry issues in the programming so that makes the 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 hardware of the BMS itself relatively agnostic to the battery chemistry and we can just fix things in the programming as needed for different for different variations in battery chemistry. Um, as you're designing your control interface here's some things to consider. I won't go through this entire slide uh, but certainly the, the heat the status if you've got a, a heater on board that's trying to maintain the temperature of your cells a, a lot of especially the the 18650 they don't like cold uh, the, the wet cells in general don't like going below freezing. It doesn't work out very well. Uh, so it's important to have a heat system if you, if you can't keep that in the internal temperatures going at the appropriate levels. Monitoring the cell voltages and the current status across each and then making sure you have a good flow of, of data and telemetry uh, coming out of your ports to get back down to your, your operating systems. Uh, testing standards. So this, interestingly enough, this has caught a lot of our commercial partners off guard, so I want to just kind of do a little uh, motherhood here. The, if you're going to go on a range, there's very stringent standards for testing that have to be met, and, and here's the list of them. Uh, if you're uncomfortable with how these standards really work, you know, feel free to reach out with us. We're happy to talk with the small SAC community about how to, how to deal with these kinds of things. There's a lot of documentation involved, a lot of testing rigor, and it's important to, to do your homework and do these things right uh, if you're, if you're going to get tested out on the range on, on any of the rocket systems. Uh, as far as battery performance, here's some profiles. Uh, so continuous discharge with some pulse currents of up to 20 amps coming out of our 2 amp hour system. Uh, we demand a lot out of these batteries and we push them pretty hard and we've, we've had great success. Um, for charging rates, you know, that's an important thing you know, when, when you're, especially if your uh, cells are, are starting to degrade and you're only going to get so much charge out of them anyway, you want to be able to take on as much of that charge as you can in each cycle. Here's some examples of the charge rates that we've experimented with in our 5 amp power systems. Uh, you know, the, the key takeaway is you know, even at uh, 2% uh, charge rate, excuse me, charging from a 2% state of charge, we're able to fully recharge in 30 minutes. So that's you know, less than half of an orbit. Uh, so that means in, in the full sunlight cycle of a single orbit, we can get fully recharged from 2% uh, discharge state. Uh, some more data on the life cycle testing that we've conducted. We've done a full year vacuum test uh, with these pouch cells and to see how they'll perform. You can see the data there. Uh, overall, what we've found is that we get about three times more life than the 18650s and about half the recharge time on orbit. Uh, which is a pretty significant game changer for a variety of CubeSat missions. Uh, these this technology's matured a lot, and we've come a long way with understanding what it can really do. And it's got some substantial thermal vac testing uh, and and on orbit performance and rocket system performance to uh, to back it up now. A little bit more data about some, kind of our projections for life cycle. So you can see there in the actual data points our our one year uh, simulated environment that we tested. 
and then you carry that on down it works out to about 22,000 cycles before you re reach 80% charge uh, capacity which is sort of the, the standard end of life uh, line that we, we try and talk to. Uh, we would love to talk with you about you know, kind of what you're thinking about and what your requirements are for your different missions. You can reach out to Edmund or myself. Uh, you can find our website at spaceinformationlabs.com and uh, thank you for your time. Here's a few of the sources that we displayed for some of the radiation information and looking forward to hearing from all of you. Take care.